Hey, today I'm going to go over designing images for various mobile devices. Um, understand that when you do design for, say, an iPhone or iPad or Barnes & Noble Nook or the many other e-readers out there and uh, personal devices like a cell phone, um, you often want to make the website fluid and flexible so it will look kind of consistent across various media across various browsers. Um, some people think you can still have a, a fixed width as long as it fits on all the media. Others um, kind of argue that you should have a fluid width to your web page. That's a little bit different. What I'm going to be going over today is actually specific images um, that are created for a specific device. So um, let me pull up a little notepad here. Um, I have a couple dimensions here. The iPad, current one, um, it's 1024 by 768 pixels resolution. Or if you want to think about it the other way, it's 768 by 1024 because you can hold it portrait or landscape. It's 132 pixels per inch. iPhone 4 actually has a higher pixels per inch, 326, um, a 960 and 640 pixel resolution. And then Barnes & Noble's Nook has 600 by 800 pixel and 167 PPI. Now in this example, I'm actually going to do one for the iPad. So if you want to go ahead and open up Adobe Photoshop and then go to File New. And if we forget them, I can just pull it back up here. It's 1024 by 768, which is pretty standard. So I'll do that for the height and the width. So the width is a smaller one, so it is portrait uh, orientation. And also our 132 PPI on the resolution, and I'll hit OK. And if I want to go back here, I'll show you some examples I made. Um, here's one, you know, Alice in Wonderland, and then just had a kind of an elegant font with serifs, and then the who's it by right there, kind of in that little natural space. Um, the other one, I just use a custom shape from Photoshop, but I'll show how to, how to create those. If you want to download the support files, it's uh, just four files of you know cards and uh, chess pieces, which kind of matches the theme. So does the rabbit, of course. So our new file from here, uh, what you want to do is, if you want to use one of those photos, you can. There's a couple ways of doing it. You could copy and paste it. You could place it. Or you can just click and drag. In CS5, it has these tabs. Um, then you can use the Move tool and click and drag it onto our new file here. You will notice it's a lot larger. So you'll have to click and drag the corner, hold Shift to maintain the correct proportion. And you can make it a little bit smaller here. Unless you want just a really small detail of it. Um, you can also rotate it, of course. Just go along that corner here and click and drag and I hold shift also and then I'll just hit enter to apply that transformation and then from there you'll notice we have the background layer layer one now if you want to create something else on another layer you can press the new create a new layer if you wanted to add brush I don't know if you wanted to add some kind of brush pattern here I don't know um, or if you wanted to, for example, add uh, like an area of pixels, you could actually do a new layer and then use the marquee selection tool and click and drag over. And then see whatever I have in the foreground. If I do Alt Backspace or on the Mac, it's Option Delete. Or if you do Control Backspace or Command Delete, um, it fills with whatever is in the foreground or the background. So that's if you wanted, you know, just some pixels. You could also just do a shape like that, rectangle tool, and set it to the pixels here, the third one up there. Um, but I'm going to go back there and undo that. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to do some bold text up at the top. So I'll hit the type tool. And when I click, of course, it creates a new layer, a text layer. And I'm going to type in Alice in all caps. And I'll press Control-A. And it would actually be 
Command A on the Mac, and I'll press the orange up there, and I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to make it white to offset from that background. And the nice thing is, is because I just clicked and started typing it out, I can adjust the size of it with the corner. So if you do the Move tool, make sure Show Transform Controls is selected up there. And I'll click and drag the corner. Oops. Holding Shift to maintain the correct proportion. Otherwise, I'll show you, you can really distort it. If you're going for a specific look that was distorted, that would be one thing. But if you want to maintain the right proportion, you want to hold Shift there. Now you could even have this go off the page a little bit and let the mine fill in the blanks, you know, because we can still read it. As long as you can still read it, you know, something like that. But I want a little bit of breathing room on the edge here for this example. So make it slightly smaller. Okay. Then I'll hit enter. And a quick shortcut, instead of having to do that all over again by pressing the type tool. Just hold down Alt. This is a shortcut in a lot of the Adobe programs. Alt and then click and drag and hold Shift if you want to align it correctly. And then it just duplicates that object or that layer here. So I will take the type tool, click and drag over it, type in in. And with the other example, you'll notice back here, we have it on the next line. So we can do that or you could I don't know if you tried Wonderland there, it probably wouldn't really, yeah, you only, you only get part of it. So you have to hit enter, or actually not enter, I'm sorry, Pre do the move tool again, because you want separate text boxes here in case you want to move them around. And again, alt, and then click and drag it. And then another way, instead of using the type tool and clicking over it, you can also double click the T over here and that will select it as well. So I'll type in part of it, one, same idea, and then Alt, click and drag it again, and the final one, for the land here. And I'm checking to make sure there's a consistent spacing around the edges. I mean, with this one, the A's and the W obviously go over a little bit compared to the N. Um, I'm not too worried about that. You could align it, but um, the N almost kind of looks nicer, I think, indented a little bit naturally. Um, there is some breathing room around the edges, at least. Now, with this example, Let's do the same thing again, but let's make this smaller. And for the little author's name, actually just do that. Remember to press enter to apply that. And we'll type in Lewis. And this one, instead of centered on top of each other, I'm actually I'm going to bring it, offset it a little bit like that. So it's not right next to each other, but it's also not right on top either. I'm going to have to move Lewis slightly over. And Carol slightly over, so it has a little bit of breathing room. Don't want it right on the edge there. I should move them down a little bit so there's a consistent space above it and below it. Okay, so there we go. That's the basic idea. Alice in Wonderland, just nice, bold, elegant text, and then the author's name right there. Now, if you don't like the photo, we could hit the eye icon on the layers palette, press new layer, and drag it below all the text. And then on this layer, we can choose a background layer um, let's maybe make some kind of blue and OK and then press Alt Backspace Oops, I think I locked that layer by accident. Let me delete that one. Okay.
There we go. So alt backspace, I filled that background there. It's a it's nice, but maybe it's a little bit too plain, needs a little bit more detail. So what I would do is add another layer right above this kind of aqua one, but below all the text ones. And you can click and hold on to the rectangle tool and bring up the custom shape tool. And the rabbit does match the overall theme, of course, of Alice in Wonderland. But so would, say, a queen's crown. Um, you could do a shape and be able to resize it um, even after you draw it, or if you just want pixels, if you think you'll just make it smaller and not bigger, you could use pixels as well. I'm going to choose a different color though. Try to find one that kind of complements it. I'm not sure if it's a complementary color with that, but I think it looks good just by looking at it. Um, and I'll move this maybe over to the side coming off. I mean, you could put it kind of over here, almost like balanced. Because you're going to start looking, your eyes are going to start right up here. And you're going to read it down, and then you'll have the, the queen's crown over here. The other way of doing it is, I mean, another option is going back to custom layer. And uh, you could find something else that matches it. Um, you could do one of these kind of elegant shapes. And it doesn't have to be the same exact rotation, so you could actually rotate it a little bit. Hit enter. As long as you don't make it larger than the original if you use the pixel option. If you use the shape one, that's fine. You can resize it. You know, you can make it a little bit bigger if you wanted, but don't want to too much. And I could just put it below maybe the Wonderland part. I don't know, it's up to you. Um, so just be creative uh, with your various designs with that. Um, and that's just creating a simple book cover design. Um, you know, you could save it as a JPEG just as maybe add it to your portfolio um, and try these different sizes. And it's kind of a way to learn all these different sizes for different e-readers. Of course, some, you know, when you're doing the websites, things like that, it should be uh, flexible enough to fit on various devices without having to recreate uh, new images. But this is almost like just kind of like an ebook cover. Okay. All right. Thank you.